So we have a wonderful. So welcome to our Varoma special, getting to know your Varoma, which is this bit on top of your Thermomix. Some people haven't used it very much at all, and some people love using it every day. And that's why we've brought you this class today. My name's Jessica Fabian. I'm the team leader of the Flying Flamingos, and I have my wonderful team with me. And we're going to be cooking, I think, five dishes today. I've got Beck. I'm going to quickly flip over to your kitchen. Who's Beck from the Barossa? And um, we're going to see some beautiful sweets from Beck. And we're going to jump over to Deb's kitchen. Uh, hi, Deb. Hello. <laughs> and Deb, Deb's going to show us some beautiful um, savoury dish later on. And Heidi, Heidi's here. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> Hey, Heidi's going to show us a beautiful cheesecake. Oh, good, Heidi. And Mel's going to be seeing us as well um, with a beautiful uh, savoury dish as well. So we've got a bit of everything today. Can't wait to um, give you guys lots of tips. And let's see what everyone's been saying in the chat box, hey? Um, have we got anyone not using the Varoma? Okay, so... Jamie wants to use it a bit more. Gail uses it a bit, but would like to use it more. Megan says it's the only way I cook my sticky date puddings. Oh, great, Megan. Uh, Kelly says she uses it to steam cupcakes, chicken and veggies. Great. And Susan uses it very rarely. Well, you've come to the right class, Susan. Um, and Amanda hard, has hardly used hers in 16 years of owning a Thermomix. Oh, you've come to the right class then, Amanda, welcome. Um, and rarely for Robin, Gail says it does a great corned beef. Excellent, that's a really popular one too. Um, thank you guys for, for letting me know how, how much you're using your Varoma and hopefully after today, will um, convince you <laughs> to use your Varoma more often because it's a super handy part of the Thermomix and it often gets forgotten. So that's why we thought it'd be great to bring this class to you. Um, you might be able to hear that mine's going on in the background. I've got my dish, which is a savoury dish, which I'll tell you more about later. I've got that going. Um, but the, the, the Varoma can really bulk up your meals. So you might be doing a soup or... Um, a curry or just even steaming some eggs or rice and you can actually put your Varoma on top and whack in some veggies or um, some meat like fish or chicken even uh, beef which we'll see with Deb um, so you can utilize the energy you're already using the Thermomix and um, steam things up above so basically if you're doing something like a soup or a pasta sauce or even a curry and it's cooked at 100 or 120, you just need to whack it up to Varoma temperature and you can cook something on top. Now, sometimes you might need a touch more water, maybe 100 grams or so more water um, in your dish because you'll be letting out more steam. Um, but just be aware, if you're doing something milky like tuna mornay or something like that, which is cooked at, say, 90 degrees, you wouldn't want to do, um, you wouldn't want to change that to Varoma. Um, you're just going to wait and cook it after, <laughs> steam your things after. Now, if you're not even cooking anything down there, you just need to put water down the bottom. So a minimum 500 grams, so up to the first dot um, in your bowl. Um, so we have, the, we have the dots there. So 500 grams of water is your minimum. And that'll do about 20 minutes of steaming. If you need to steam a big corned beef or a roast, you're going to need lots of water. So, you know, a litre and a half or something like that um, to steam for a longer time. So your Thermomix won't know if it's run out of water. You need to keep an eye on it. So 500 grams is the minimum for about 20 minutes. And if you wanna do 40 minutes or an hour or more for like a whole steamed chicken, that's when you're gonna put more water in, of course, cause that's going to ev like evaporate with steam. If you have any other questions like that, please pop them in um, the chat box. Uh, Karen says, how much water to cook frozen dumplings? So I would put in the, the minimum 500 
if you put boiling water in, it will obviously take less time to heat and more time to steam. So feel free to put boiling water in to, if you've got it on hand. Um, so I would do about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, Varoma temperature, it's always about speed one when you're doing Varoma. Um, for your steamed dumplings that are frozen, um, I would do that. Is the lid supposed to wobble? Good question, Gail. No, um, it should, once it's heated, your lid should not wobble. If it does well, wobble a little bit when it's um, not uh, cooking, that can be okay. But once it's heated up and it's steaming, it shouldn't, it shouldn't wobble. So if yours is, please contact your consultant um, to discuss that. Um, so yeah, this is really firm, um, not wobbling. So just test it. Any other questions? Black Beauty, I know I didn't even introduce Black Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, Jess? Black, yes. Um, just getting on to um, what you're saying, yes. um, I just wanted to remind people in their cookbook, this is obviously the TM6 cookbook. Um, obviously always you've got the other cookbooks, but at the back, there is a steaming function guide and it tells you the grams and mm. how much to actually um, put the timer on. So if you're a bit unsure when you're first starting out, this is a great little resource to go to. Even if you take a, a photocopy and stick it up somewhere, if you feel like you're going to utilise your Varoma a little bit more. And the other thing I would suggest is always, if you're doing combination of vegetables, always minus the time off that it takes the least the one that needs to cook the least and set the timer so that you know that when you put in the other vegetables you can just set it for that time difference otherwise you might overcook some of those um, vegetables great tips thank you very much deb um, for pointing that out and in the white TM6 book in the back, like Deb said, if you've got the TM5 green book, I think that's still in the front. Um, so really handy there. And we're going to go to Beck in a sec, but I just want to say if anyone does want a Black Beauty or it's called a limited edition TM6, <laughs> Black um, TM6, if you do want one, we have sold over 50% in the first week. So if you're wanting one, please contact your consultant and order one today. Um, so that you can secure yours. They are pretty awesome. Um, I'm loving this one. And um, it's, yeah, very special, very shiny and sparkly as well. Um, so yeah, get onto your consultant if you're wanting one. It does come with the black um, uh, round thermo server and an oval one in black. So it comes with the both. So get to that if you are keen. I don't want you to miss out. First of all, we're going to do a little bit of uh, cupcakes in uh, over in the Barossa with Beck. So I will hand over to you now. Hi. So we're going to start with dessert because you should always start with dessert because dessert is awesome. Um, and we're making lemon cupcakes with citrus syrup. Um, so these ones used to um, always be at the live cooking classes. I remember cooking these um, about nine, eight or nine years ago and handing them out. And they're still amazing all that time later. Um, and the awesome thing about these ones is you don't need your oven to cook them. So even if you're out glamping with your Thermomix, you can make cupcakes on the road and be everybody's best friend. Um, so to start with, um, in your recipe, you need to start by popping your cupcakes into your aroma, just like lining a tray. Um, the best way to do that is to pop a few in the bottom. Um, you just got to be mindful that you keep the little slots, little holes, um, so that the steam can go through. So I put, for this one, it's 12. So I put five in the bottom and then seven on the top. Um, when you put the lid on, you need to make sure that these ones are in a little bit further. Otherwise, the lid doesn't sit on straight. Um, but that will depend on your little cupcake tin that you're using. And then you just pop that aside and start making your cake batter. So I have my little assistant who's going to pop things in. Um, so to start with, we need some sugar. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, and we're also with the sugar, it's a little bit more because I've also popped the lemon zest in with it. So when you're zesting the lemon, um, I pop it in a little bit of paper to get some of the excess oil out of the lemon zest. So you want to use a peeler and peel it as close um, to the peel as possible so you get 
a minimum amount of the little white pith on the other side um because that makes it quite bitter and then I wrap it up in some paper towel and pop it to the side for five or ten minutes at least just to get some of the excess oil out so that it will grate up nicer um so we put them both in together and we essentially make some lemon sugar it's just gonna do that And then we pop in the butter. Put our butter in. So we've already, we've already weighed our butter. And mix that together. And then we have two eggs. We have two eggs and one egg yolk to pop in. Yep, so we're just going to pop them all in together because we're a bit naughty, but normally it asks you <laughs> one by one. Um, and then we have 170 grams of self raising flour. You can pop in there. Yep, pop a bit in. Just tip. In tip. We do the tip. So pour that in. I absolutely love with the thermomix that you don't have to sift all your flour. I just find it so much faster. You get equal good <laughs> when a little bit too far. Oh, and our coconut milk. Which wasn't pre weighed, sorry. Oops, a bit too much. And then give that a mix. And then you just want to give this one a scrape down. No, don't give me the next part. <laughs> My assistant likes to cook more than I do. <laughs> so give that a nice scrape down. That smells good. It smells very lemony. And then give that another quick mix. That's pretty much it. Can I just give a, um, like with this, it's really good. If you don't have the lemon, right, you could always add a bit of food grade lemon essential oil into your batter so that you're not changing the portion of your liquid, but you're getting the real good lemon kick. I saw someone here really likes the um the lemon um so yeah that could be a plus if you didn't have any lemons on hand you could also use orange so you could make these like little orange cake um by using orange juice um for the syrup and also using um orange peel or orange oil but you get like a nice cake butter so basically from there you can do the rest we'll just show you you pretty much just pop them into your little cake tins uh, you really only have to put a half in. I love these little ones because they've got a little halfway line, so you don't really have to guess. You can. So um, you just pretty, you're pretty much there. The other one is um, Beck. Um, if you slice, you know, when mango was in season, I would always put a slice of mango on the bottom, or you could do a slice of poached fruit on the bottom and then have it so that when you flip it over you've got like something a little bit fancy too nice that would be really awesome so yeah so you pretty much put them all in so we're going to pretend that we did all of them <laughs> so you can you pop them all in and then what you want to do is put 100 ml so clean out your cake batter quickly it says clean and dry but you don't need to dry the bowl just make sure that obviously you don't get the pins wet but fill it up with a liter of water to the liter line pop it back in and then what you want to do is pop the lid back on um, and then set your aroma on top obviously and then 
you steam for 22 minutes um, and then we make our, our syrup to pop over the top of it. So that's pretty Beautiful. much it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Beck. And there's a few different varieties of those different puddings in Cookie Do. Like some, uh, I think Megan mentioned the sticky date puddings, and there's lots of other, there's orange and almond and lots of different flavors. Um, I remember my tip, I did try and skip the step where you wash the bowl from the cake batter. I tried to skip that. And what happens, you, you've done the same thing. What happens is some of the, the goobies of your mixture seem to rise up and make your cupcakes a bit ugly. So try, don't skip that step. Do you, do you agree, Beck? You got to, you do have to wash the bowl. <laughs> you do, yeah. You don't have to dry it like it says because you're putting water back in it. <laughs> but yeah. you do have to, you have to do it, give it a, a wash to just make sure you get as much of it out as possible. You don't have awesome. to make it perfect. But I'm, I'm glad that you agree because I wasn't sure if it was just me. <laughs> All righty, thanks so much, Beck, And we can't wait to see them at the end of our class. And we're going to go over to see Deb, who is doing a, a very fancy dish for us. Thanks, Deb. Hi. Um, I decided to do a recipe that I absolutely love. Um, for any who have got, it's a very old book. It's called In the Mix. Um, it's number two by Danny Valent. And it's kind of almost up there with, you know, when you look at the book, it looks a bit out of your comfort zone. Um, but what I love about this, this is so simplistic and it's so easy. Um, it ticks all the boxes and it's especially good for people who say, I'm just a meat and three veg type of person. And it's a real good way of heroing, showing just how meat can indeed be cooked in the, um, the mimic. So there's a picture of it. Um, mine might not look so fancy as that. But what you're going to love about me is I'm a Mother Hubbard cook. So some of the ingredients that are asked for, for instance, it wanted pine nuts. So we make a pesto. I've already made that in advance. I've just made it with macadamia. Um, you could use nutritional yeast flakes if you want to be vegan. Um, I've used sheep's cheese, pecorino um, to make my, um, my pesto. So the pesto recipe is actually on the recipe itself. So that's already pre-made and because I've been busy I've actually come straight from doing a market today my husband has already done half the step for me so he's basically cut up and um, steamed the potatoes and what happens when and this is the beauty of why you want to maximize and utilize your Varoma I'm very into zero waste and not losing any of those beautiful nutrients and um, whether you're going to make a sauce or a soup under or whether you keep that liquid and freeze it to be a basis for a stock later on, um, it's all about being mindful even with your water consumption, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, so while he was steaming the potatoes, he was making the basis of our gravy at the same time. So all the juices from the potatoes were going into here. And he had a bit of olive oil, he had a bit of garlic um, and a bit of chicken stock. The um, recipe did ask for beef stock paste, but we've only got chicken stock paste. So I'm just utilising uh, what we have. But what I wanted to um, show to you is we've um, actually got some porterhouse here. Um, and you kind of um, tenderize it so that you get it um, fairly thin because we're going to um, put the pesto and a little bit of currants um, in the um, in the beef like and you roll it up now you could do this with chicken you don't have to do a basil pesto you could do an olive tapenade you could do you know your roasted sun-dried and capsicum dip um, whatever you got left, you don't even have to do a dip. You could have like, I've got this beautiful truffle cashew cheese and I would actually think the mushroom with the beef would go really well in this or even adding a bit of puccini um, in the gravy stock. So it's all about using what you've got, what's in season and almost using minimal amounts of ingredients. So, um, sure, so... 
I just am a really slap happy cook, so it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna lay that all out and sprinkle the currants. And if I wanted to add a bit of texture, I could add some extra um, macadamias here. I have a bit left over. And then you can simply roll it up. So I'll do one and show you. And you can either um, toothpick it and it will still cook the same amount, or you can seal it in um, glad wrap and make, you know, um, almost like a bonbon. And then what we will do is we will layer it on the top rack of your varoma. So we've still got the potatoes in there. So um, if you haven't cooked your potatoes the whole way through, um, you basically then put it on. Um, and it only takes three minutes to cook on Varoma, the meat component, and then you let it rest. And remember to let it rest. But that's how easy and quick it is. And then um, later on, I'll show you about adding the other vegetables and making the gravy. So that's me done, Jess. Beautiful. It looks so fancy. And we were lucky enough, weren't we, Deb, years ago yeah. to watch, watch Danny Valent um, yeah. make that, which she introduced us to this dish. I've actually just found the link because uh, luckily um, Danny Valent has put it on her website. It's, yep. not in cook it's not in cookie do, but I've just popped the link into the chat box. Oh, you were there too, Beck. <laughs> oh, weren't we lucky? And recently we just had a chef visit us here in South Australia again, Nico Moretti. So definitely great to learn from them. Now, thanks, Deb. We'll come back and see how <laughs> they look in the end. Um, and we're going to go see Mel James. Um, and she's going to show us another amazing dish. Hi Jess, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be making the family chicken galette. I often call it as gazette, but the galette. Um, so today we're obviously highlighting the Varoma. So Jess asked if I'd like to show something in the Varoma and I have a few customers wanting to make more use of their Varoma um, and also to you know, maximise this opportunity, I decided to cook something that my family eat. And when I searched up Varoma, I came across this recipe that we quite enjoy. We just haven't had it for a while. So we're looking forward to having this. Um, I don't always make the pastry, but I did a quick calculation and worked out it did only cost roughly $2.50 to make the pastry. And it was 20 seconds on speed six, and then it just rests in the fridge for 20 minutes, which it is doing now. You also make um, some caramelized onions, which have um, some bacon in there as well. So I've pre-done that also, and this absolutely like smells amazing. Um, the flavors just go so well together. So, and there's also some um, balsamic in there and some dark sugar, which just makes the caramelization like amazing. Um, so then um, we're gonna start at the chicken filling today. So I've already popped, um, the, I've already popped 500 grams of water into my jug. Um, and then it's asking for um, me to put on my Varoma. And just to save a bit of time, I've already put uh, the ingredients into the Varoma. So we've got um, the recipe asks for sweet potato. So we have one person that doesn't eat sweet potato. So I've got some potato in there for that person. You can use whatever veg you want. We've used um, leftover roast veg before. Um, you could use whatever is in your fridge. So, um, and then we've got chicken strips that have a bit of pepper and some thyme. The thyme just makes some amazing flavors. All the flavors combined are pretty amazing. So 
We've weighed our chicken tenderloins. I brought chicken breast again to make it cheaper and cut my own tenderloins. Um, and then we have our veg. Um, it obviously asks for sweet potato, but whatever you have. Um, and then we're going to cook that on Varoma temperature for 10 minutes. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Mel. I love how you've utilised your Varoma for us today. Um, so just to clarify, for those that might have missed it, that bacon you showed us, that was done in the Thermomix, right? That's right. So this we did um, while we were waiting. So the um, that's bacon and onion and balsamic Yum. and um, some dark brown sugar and yeah, it's awesome. So good. It smells amazing. Well, as usual, I wish we had smell vision, but yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Mel. We're going to come back and see how Mel puts together her pastry that she's made and, and creates this chicken um, galette. Um, so it's a very fancy dish, but pretty easy, I'm right? Just, I'm sorry, Jess, I might just quickly, like, I was going to come back to this, but yeah, um, I might as well just, like, tell you guys what I'm going to do. Uh, so I've got my other jug which today is going to go in my other thermomix just to save time but I wanted to just show you how quick and easy it was to make the um it's kind of like a bit meal sauce um maybe with a bit more flavor because it uses stock and cream so we've got butter flour stock paste and some cream and Basically, they all go in together at the same time and four minutes and then I'll have my sauce. So I'm going to do that over on my other thermi while this is happening. Fabulous. Thank you for letting us know that, Mel. And I'm going to pop the recipe into the chat box now. Um, family chicken galette or chicken family galette. <laughs> and um, like Mel said, there's a few steps, but um, it's a great one. You can do a few of the steps ahead of time, which will then really speed up um, the, the process. Um, if you're at home or you've got a bit of time, you can you can do your pastry, you can do your, your bechamel sauce that Mel was talking about just then, and you can do the caramelised onion bacon um, and then the steaming and just put it all together closer to dinner time for a fabulous result. Thanks, Mel. No worries. I was just going to also quickly say, I think yeah. if you, um, the like for roast veg, instead of making like the extra bit meal sauce, we've used like cauliflower and broccoli cheese. Yeah, great. Yeah, you can, adapt, you can adapt that. Yeah, Fabulous. Roast is great for this. Fabulous. Thank you, Mel. And oops, I went to the wrong kitchen. <laughs> That's Beck's lemon uh, puddings you saw. And over to Heidi. Thank you, Heidi. Hello. Hi, thanks, Jess. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm making a cookie dough recipe today called the New York style cheesecake with strawberry sauce. Um, it's a wonderful recipe, but it does actually use the oven to bake. I don't mind using the oven in wintertime, summertime. I like to avoid using the oven as much as I can. This recipe I have changed a little bit only because I have been putting it into the Varoma. The biscuit base that I make will be the same amount of biscuit base, but the topping is actually a kilo of um, uh, cream cheese normally. And I thought that was a lot of cream cheese. And to be quite honest, that wouldn't work in the Varoma because it just ra rise a bit. And the halved um, amount of the topping works just perfectly in my 20 centimeter spring form can. So um, to start, I suppose we do grind up some biscuits, which you can make yourself or you can cheat like I did today, unfortunately. I'll start up, hang on. I'll oh, grease some mine the spring form cake pan, sorry. I shouldn't jump the gun, I should follow the instructions. I have um, a nice um, rose gold 20 centimetre spring form pan, which I find fits perfectly into my Varoma, fits beautifully. And while I remember, you do need to put a small heat proof coaster or something underneath that lets the 
steam escape around the, the spring form pan. Otherwise, you end up just having the um, pressure build up inside and it won't be able to cook the, the cheesecake properly. Uh, you can cheat also and buy the pre cut parchments, um, paper rounds, which fit nicely into the spring form pan. And that's what I'm using today as well. It's got the handy little tabs that you can just pull it out, theoretically. Doesn't always work for me. But in any case, I have greased my pan already. Uh, 60 grams of unsalted butter. Uh, and then and, and, and my lid. Sorry. I think we just melt it briefly. Sorry, I could actually melt it this beforehand. I've got a feeling we won't need the two minutes though. Yep. Yes. No, no worries. And I'm wondering, I've just popped into the chat box a link to the the Varoma trivet. Um, I have I wonder, one of them. I wonder yes. if it would be too high, like if if the cake would still fit, the cake tin would still fit. I, but, think, um, I think that would work actually. I have got it somewhere. I'll see if I can find it in a bit. In, in, I know. In I've yeah, got one. Kitchen. I've got one too, and I haven't used it much. So we should give it. We should. I have use forgotten it. to use it for this. <laughs> I use. I actually use it in my camping cook oven when we go bush camping and I've used it in there to do some steaming and whatnot but yeah I should actually use it in the aroma that's a really good idea <laughs> like a little um what's it like a little rack Jess. So, yeah a stainless steel round little tiny thing that lifts um you can pop it in the bottom of the aroma okay I've, I've popped it into the chat box. Um, I think it'd be really good because um, I was even just thinking sometimes, you know, when you're cooking chicken and you find like you really have to scrub the little holes, you know, when it kind of gets a little bit stuck. Yeah. In the, where if you've got that, it would be really good. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'll stop sharing so you can show your, you found it, did you, Heidi? I, I quickly emptied a cup and I found it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that will fit beautifully. I'll have a quick try. I bet it would fit better. I'll see if it fits. Yeah, perfect. as long as it doesn't yep. touch. The, would the cake rise too much and touch the Not meat? because I've because halved the topping. It'll be okay. all right. Ah, yep. there you go. See if that. You see if that Yay, works. good one. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> we we this learned is why I come to me. these things, I learn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we learned together. <laughs> All right. We have melted our butter with that nice little refining trivets. All right, here I think comes the cheap part where I have unfortunately bought biscuits. I'm sorry. It I says just um, 150 grams granita style biscuits, any style biscuits. I've made it with ginger nut before. It's very nice for ginger nut. Oh, you uh, could even do a chocolate, a chocolatey biscuit. There's some of those plain. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. that would be nice too. Anyway, how these are just ordinary Scotch fingers today. Yeah. So this is really super easy. Um, I suppose it's super easy. It's not something you can make spur of the moment if you're sort of going to a picnic in the afternoon. You do sort of need a little bit of prep time. You need to put it in the fridge and that sort of thing. But it's so easy to make. It doesn't take much time. Sorry, did I interrupt someone? Oh, there's 40 grams of caster sugar, which I omit. I, I feel we don't need it. The, the biscuits have got plenty of sugar in them already. This will now be just blitzed up for two seconds. And Susan has said an egg ring works well too. Thanks, Susan. Maybe you Perfect. could. Maybe Susan could join our team too. Uh, and yeah, very teach us good a thing. <laughs> oh, oh no, good. All right. So let's start this rather nicely. I, don't know I need to give it a mix around. Now I would go straight to the press evenly into the spring form. I don't know if you need to see that, Jess, or if you want to flick to someone else's kitchen or... Sure, we can flick. Um, yeah, we'll flick while you're getting that into the tray. Um, sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Can I just quickly just show... Sure, um, we'll, flip, we'll flip to you. <laughs> okay, sorry. 
So um, I've cooked it for three minutes, but it has another five minutes because what I've done is I've loaded broccolini and beans on top of the potatoes and then I've got my meat seeing the little um, cooking. So that will be like five minutes and then it will rest. So I thought I'd just show you how it's all yeah. laid. And if you wanted to, I know today, because I just couldn't be bothered and I couldn't find the toothpicks, I personally wouldn't normally do it in Glad Wrap. I would just do it straight roll and put a toothpick through it. And the beauty of that is then any juices will actually go through even further into your gravy um, to flavour it. Oh, beautiful. And that's what I love, um, that you're going to be utilising the cooking water to make a beautiful gravy. Um, and that's actually similar to my dish today. Um, so we can uh, save save all those beautiful flavours. Now, um, Heidi's doing that. Um, who else have we got? Beck, have, Beck's not there. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk about mine. Beck, is yours finished? You got another yes. six minutes. No worries. No. And Mel, Mel, would you like to show us rolling out the pastry or wherever you're up to? Yeah, I sure can. So um, my 10 minutes has just finished. I've got oh, my um, like that meal type sauce, I don't know what to call it, um, in the other thermomix. It's asking me to add mushrooms. We're not having mushrooms added to ours today. I've actually added a bit extra sweet potato and potato. And then it, um, actually, well, I might just give it a little stir and stuff. I quite like to do that when I'm cooking um, meat in the thermomix. So um, maybe I'll just bring the camera up here. So um, just you can see why like, underneath is a bit more cooked. So I'm just sort of giving that a bit of a stir. So let's pop you back over there. And um, like the others have mentioned, you want to make sure that you've got your holes um, so that the steam can come through. That's really important. Um, yeah, and then it's going to go on for another five minutes. Oops, I forgot to turn it on. I thought just pushing next would make it start. All right, so that's going to go for five minutes. Great. And I might bring you down here. So I've already had a little play around with... Um, rolling one out. So I'm just going to place this over here. Are you going to make a few mini ones, Mel? I am because oh, um, yes. I've actually got friends here. So, and then we have one with no sweet potato. Yes. So I normally do three, but I'm going to do Oh, what a four. good. That's so good. I haven't actually thought of making smaller ones. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's just how we do it. So I love how we um, share those different yeah. tips when we do these things. So what someone might, you know, do all the time, someone might not have thought of. And that's one of the great things I've really enjoyed about being a consultant is, like, just being inspired and we probably would have had the same old thing for dinner tonight, to be honest, if I wasn't doing this. So everyone's quite happy we're getting an old favourite. So that was, you know, very quick and that's nice and thin and it was so soft. Um, and I've just put a tiny bit of flour on because it was a little bit sticky but it's like so easy to roll out really like for Beautiful. the most expensive thing in the pastry was the butter so I thought well could make it even cheaper if I made my own butter and one of the things I got from the mix shop the other day was my butter bell so lovely 
reducing waste and making things cheaper again because I know how much we can do that with our thermomixes and sometimes we get a bit distracted from what we're wanting to do so getting back to the basics so yeah grateful again for this opportunity oh I love how you share um your passion um and share what you're getting out of being a consultant thank you Mel we will yeah. jump back to yeah. Heidi while you um roll out all of your lovely balls and we'll see you putting that together a bit later on. No worries. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Is she right. damaged her back? Pressed into my spring form. Yeah, so that's all set and ready to go. Now we go to making the, the top cheesy topping. Oh, so I can set this one in the fridge. I suppose I should. I'll say put in the fridge. Put it in the fridge. Okay, I've got a clean dry mixing bowl here. Preheat the oven at this point, but this is where I'd flick the kettle on, put a good litre of water in the kettle if you've got one, and then boil the water up, pre boil it, save, saves on the cooking time in the uh, thermomix afterwards. So I'm going to change this about a bit as well because they use caster sugar as well as. Um, a grated lemon zest for the recipe. I, however, have um, peeled my lemons and same dr dried out like Beth did. And I've got my regular sugar, so I'm going to just make my caster sugar blitz it together at the same time with the lemon zest. So I will put this all in together and I'll give that, I'll skip out of the recipe, which is easy to do, of course, in the cookie do recipe. You can just skip in and out as required. So just push on that little house button and I'll just put it up to speed eight. Just for a bit. I'll have a quick look, just make sure that we all ground up nicely. So I do, I tend to cheat and do things my way a lot. It's not too bad. I could just grind it a little bit more. The lemon zest didn't quite fine up as much as I would like. So I'll just give it another five seconds. Should be right. I'm sure. That's much better. And it smells amazing. Making your own lemon zest sugar is wonderful. Back to the bookmark. And we're placing our, I'm going to just mix it all together now. It doesn't um, oh, call for the sugar and the lemon rind late, later, but it all just gets mixed. So it doesn't really matter the order that we put this in. So I will now put in our cream cheese. I've just used a Philadelphia. There's a, so it's quite a few different options available out there. Uh, the caster sugar is in already, cream cheese softened. Just left out the fridge for a while. It does call for you to put your spatula in whilst the Thermomix is running. Just it helps the whole mixture mix properly. I suppose the cream cheese tends to stick to the sides a bit otherwise. Of course, the spatula never bumps the blades, which is so handy. And that will go speed selected to speed five. I'd love to hear if anyone else has made many cheesecakes before. Um, and if so, what your favourite one is. Uh, there's several different cheesecakes, of course, in Cookie Do. It's one of my son's favourites, cheesecake. <laughs> Now, now it's calling for the other half of the amount of cream cheese, but I won't be adding that because I'm going half the amount. But I might still give it another little blend. So another 15 seconds. So I know a few of us have done the cheesecake in the jar recipe. Um, I might find that in cookie dough and pop it in the... Um, in the chat box because that's another one 
that steams the cheesecakes, I believe, up the top. It's, some, it's one I haven't personally done, though. I think there's a couple of steamed cheesecake recipes on the um, cookie do. And I think on the internet, full stop, there's a few. Just scrape down the sides. Oh, it smells so nice. And if I had kids lurking around the kitchen, the fingers would be coming close, I'll tell you. All right, that's beautiful. Four eggs, although I'm only putting the two eggs in. So two eggs straight in. Uh, two tablespoons of corn flour. I've got the one tablespoon of corn flour. Uh, 200 of sour cream. I've got the 100, of course. Uh, the lemon zest that we've done. Oh, and the juice of the that same lemon as well. No piss. And if you use this beautiful um, zester from the toolkit, it's my favourite zester. It just peels the outermost fine layer off the onion. Uh, the onion. The lemon or orange. It's absolutely amazing. It's my favourite zester. And again, we'll be doing the same. Lost the lid. So I think, Joy, you have hit share content of your screen because you're sharing with us a beautiful um, cheesecake <laughs> recipe. Joy. Um, so this one's a great one. It looks like one that Tanina did. It actually looks the same um, photo. Thanks for showing us, Joy. <laughs> that was a, a special bonus. Thanks, Joy. And I was actually going to put in, in the um, chat box uh, one uh, that's a New York baked cheesecake by, I think, Four Blades. So for anyone who doesn't use cookie dough, um, I might pop that in the chat box as well. Is it back to me? Straight down the sides of the benefits. And I think it's just a plain mix now, just without using the spatula. Again, it doesn't go all over the kitchen. Not that the dog would mind. 20 seconds. <laughs> Now we pour this beautiful, beautiful filling. Just wait till you see it. It's just so creamy and delicious. And honestly, you could almost eat it just as is. You can smell the lemon a mile away. Yeah, back to needing that smell of vision, Mel. So yeah, looks absolutely beautiful. Pour over that biscuit filling. So it's quite runny, but with the corn flour and with the eggs and the baking, it firms up really beautifully. And that will take about an hour to steam. I've boiled the water already, so it won't need quite as long. Now, also what you do need to do, so you don't have all the water dribbling in whilst you're cooking, otherwise you have a bit of a sloppy mess on top of the cheesecake. We do need something to go on top, a bit of aluminium foil or a silicon lid cover. Don't use your thermos server lid. It sits beautifully, perfectly on top of this, but I've tried it once and you end up with a very buckled thermos server lid. So don't try and be clever with that one. Right, Good tip. Thanks for the tip, Heidi. Um, and another thing, if anyone has silicon food grade, that, that could be another option. That's what I've done in the past with some um, black forest uh, steam puddings. Um, just put any anything that's safe with heat um, can go on top so you don't end up with um, water dripping in. Thank you so much, Heidi. That's okay. You're welcome. And I'll and we'll, 
good liter in here and start it cooking. Beautiful. And we'll have a look at your finished products. I believe Heidi was generous enough to make one for us yesterday. We'll see the finished product. <laughs> yes, and we get to eat it twice. <laughs> My family will really complain. <laughs> you could do different uh, flavoured toppings perhaps. <laughs> good idea, good idea. Now I'm going to quickly show you guys um, something simple with the Thermomix as well. What I really wanted to show you in case this is for those people that don't know um, that you can do beautiful mashed potato in the Thermomix and at the same time you can steam in the Varoma on top. Um, so I really wanted to show you, show you that for the people that don't know that. It's just real simple meat and three veg. Um, so what mm -hmm. I do, um, I have actually, I uh, have been using a recipe because I did want to share a recipe for you guys, which would have the method. And it's the paprika chicken with creamy paprika sauce. Um, and I'll pop that in the chat box. So what we do first is we put the minimum water in down the, down the bottom if we're doing mashed potato. So 500 grams of water. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fill your steamer basket with cubes of potato or in my case I've got sweet potato and potato you could use cauliflower pretty much anything in there but um yeah we're going to do a sweet potato potato mash um so we'll have the minimum water we'll have this you can fill this completely if you've got a big family or a bit smaller for a smaller family and basically you're going to put the lid on and you're going to cook those potatoes for about 20 minutes now um on top what I do hopefully this is still looking happy as I just did it at the beginning of the class um, and what I've done at, while the mash is cooking I've put some veggies in the Varoma so I put carrot down the bottom and I usually cut it quite thin maybe in rounds or today I've done uh, sliced carrot I've got broccoli and zucchini so you can choose whatever veggies sweet corn cauliflower whatever and you put that on top um, and you can place the lid on and 20 minutes is pretty much perfect, I find, for veggies and mash together. If you're doing asparagus or something like that, you might want to pop them in towards the end. In this case, I have put chicken and again, I cut that. Um, it was just chicken breast instead of tenders. I cut it in slices, put a bit of salt and actually some garlic powder, organic garlic powder you want to get. Um, and paprika, we put paprika on. Um, and that all cooked together for about 20 minutes. Um, so that's what I've done so far. And remember, I just wanted to give the tip of opening your Varoma away from yourself. Let the, the liquid drip off when you open because you can get steam burns. If you are wanting to uh, put more things in, please stop it. Don't just open it up and try and sneak in some peas. You could get burned. So please stop before taking that off away from you um, and letting it drip. Um, so my chicken and veg is done. I would probably normally serve that. Um, actually, I'll tell you what I normally do. <laughs> I normally put a plate underneath or a thermo server lid underneath to stop the drips, which is what I've done during this class. I'll bring that there. I've got a thermo server lid down on my bench, which has been gathering all the water and I keep the lid on. That's gonna keep it nice and warm. I just put this on the table and we eat from there on a normal night um, to avoid more cleaning up. If you like to clean up more things <laughs> and, if, and if you want it to look fancy, please put it in the oval thermo server. Um, so our veggies done, our potato mash is cooked. How do you make the potato mash or the sweet potato mash? What you do is you're going to get rid of the cooking water, or in this case, um, just a sec. In this case, I want to make a little bit of a gravy, which uh, Deb's going to show us in a moment. So I'm going to pour the cooking water into my thermo jug. They are available in the mix shop. So we put the cooking water into here. I had a bit more cooking water, so I've actually mm. have tipped some in. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm just going to get rid of that for now, a tiny bit of water. I'm going to put the cooking water aside to make a gravy. Um, 
What I would love to show you though is the mashed potato before we jump back to see Deb and finishing hers off. Um, in, for those that don't know. So what we do, I've just put it in the thermo server. This is a black one, comes with the black th uh, thermo mix. And I would normally probably do the gravy first and then do my mash, to be honest, um, because otherwise it's gonna be harder to clean this with all the mash in there. But for today, I'm not gonna show you the gravy. I'll just show you the mash. So all you do, once you've cooked for about 20 minutes, make sure your potato is nice and soft. Um, if it's not soft, cook it another few minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pour that in. Got a few little potatoes from the garden and, and a sweet potato. Pull that in. And then I usually season it with some butter. So I have made, I do make my own butter. Um, and I'm just gonna put a big dog in. That's what I do. You could put a pinch of salt, pepper, whatever you like. What I do is just do the butter. I don't worry about the butterfly. And what I do is I just do 10 seconds speed four for a nice rustic um, mashed potato. That's what I do. You could put cream in, salt, pepper, onion powder, leeks, herbs, chives, whatever you want to flavor your mash to make it your, your favorite. Um, let's have a look what it looks like. Here we go. This is good for us. This is our sweet potato mash, nice and creamy. Um, and we would serve, you could serve that with your meat of choice, um, sausages, steak, whatever. You've got your mash and your veg done. But in my case today, I've got um, the chicken as well. I'm going to plate that up and show you what it looks like. But we will jump over to, um, to Mel and then Deb. Mel's gonna make the chicken galette for us. Hi Jeff, so I've just kind of stopped at this step. So this is uh, the sauce that I've made. So, um, and also I've got my veg. So I've also got the bottom of the thermo server underneath my Varoma, that's, and then it asked us to chop the chicken up. So I've just gone over and done that. And then we want to add it to our sauce. And then we want to add our, um, actually, what did that say? <laughs> oh, that was the cut the chicken, then add the cooked chicken. I'm not gonna add the, sweet potato and potato, otherwise it's gonna mix up who gets what. So I'm gonna mix that in later. Add your mushrooms, pop the lid on, and 10 seconds on reverse to mix that up. And then I'm just gonna pop that over here for a sec. So I've got my, um, pop you back there, I've got um, my baking paper holding my um, different bits of pastry separately. Um, and I've already rolled my pastry out and I've preheated my oven. Um, yep, mm -hmm. I've rolled out my dough, <laughs> transfer baking paper onto a baking tray so we want I've got my lovely um gold trays from the mix shop with the liners they're absolutely amazing so easy to clean um then we're going to spread some of the caramelized onions onto our pastry as the bottom layer top with the chicken mixture so that would have normally had the veg in it so I'm just going to add a bit of veg onto here now hold it up in a sec to show you 
So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more. And so that's mixed all the chicken. It reminds me of like a chicken pie and someone else said it reminded them of a pasty. So sort of a pie mixed with a pasty. <laughs> So top with the chicken mixture. Set to roll into a circle. I've managed to get a bit of a square. So that's what it looks like. And then, oops, I've rolled my, oh, that's terrible filming now. <laughs> So I'm going for the rustic look as well, as you can see. <laughs> so that's what it looks like before it goes into the oven. And that actually looks like I've made the edges of the pastry a little bit thin, but that will go into the oven and that's gonna be someone's dinner tonight. Oh, that's going to be absolutely delicious. <laughs> I also um, wanted to mention the other good thing about using spelt, I mean, making my own pastry was that I've got to use spelt flour, so I find it, it's a lot less heavy. Um, yeah, so awesome. that's another good thing about making your own, being able to make those little adjustments to suit your diet and lifestyle and stuff what you like personally yeah excellent thank you so much for showing us that it's absolutely delicious and um enjoy that tonight with your family i sure will thanks yes <laughs> thanks for awesome and we get oh of course the dream team presenting today <laughs> Okay, what I'm first going to do, um, I let the meat rest um, and always just check that depending on how much you've tenderised your meat, whether it's chicken or beef, you might need to do a bit of less um, cooking or more cooking time. But if you let it sit, that's another thing. If you are doing it in the plastic, it can kind of keep retain the heat. So if you have undercooked it, it's still kind of doing the cooking component. But always remember um, the ideal thing is to let your meat rest to begin with um this is really quick and easy and um we're going to make a gravy now the flavor of this i'm going to just show you i've actually roasted in the air fryer some sweet potato at the same time but i've i've cut up my um rotolo there and um you could just serve it like that because there's so much flavor in the pesto and the meat is so tender that really i don't think you need to have a gravy but um the recipe does come with a gravy you could even make a like a, a passata or a cherry tomato um kind of um a sauce instead um if you don't like um, a gravy i've actually managed to even sneak in i found my mushroom powder in the pantry and i love beef and mushroom together so i'm definitely gonna um add that in to make it my spin if you didn't want to make the gravy, um, make a soup, whether it's for lunch the next day, so you've already got something cooked in advance, or um, if you've got a large family and you're trying to bulk out your meals, um, you know, you could have a little bit of soup before you had the main course. And uh, you could add additional vegetables. It's really quick and easy to cook this dish. So all I'm putting in is ask for both Dijon and whole grain mustard. I don't have whole grain mustard at the moment. So I'm just going to put um, some Dijon um, mustard into this. We want about a tablespoon, 30 grams of, I don't really measure. So I like to show people just, you don't have to be pedantic. Um, but, you know, it's like you're making your bechamel or any type of sauce where you're wanting a bit of thickness to it so I've had a little bit of that and then what I will measure out because otherwise I will go heavy-handed I've got some red wine here you can use port you don't even need to put the alcohol in it if you're wanting to get that acidity you could put a little splash of balsamic vinegar 
to lift it or you can always get red for juice as well. Um, that's something that you could add. But I just like always working with whatever I've got in the um, cupboard. So, and all it does, I'll put a little bit of this mushroom powder. Now there's some on the outside of the, so I'm just gonna, cause we don't want it too overpowering. And this goes for four minutes on a hundred degrees. And this is where you could start then cutting up or having your meat rest. Um, what I've done is um, I've taken out my broccolini and beans and I'm a bit of a gourmet cook. Um, so I actually always keep like chopped up almonds and garlic or um, my ducka. And so I will just um, garnish it on the side. And then um, with the potatoes we cooked, I've actually just chopped up quickly some parsley, zested some lemon and put a drizzle of lemon oil and salt um, on those um, ready to go. And then I'll just um, make the gravy, which will take four minutes. Not just this morning. So um, I'm just going to put that on 100. It doesn't need to be on Roman now. And so I'll just plate some of this so you can see the end result. So my family is going to be very happy with this. Oh, Hubby's <laughs> just walked in and he's saying it smells delicious. We should get him to come and have a look. So how's that looking? And do you know what? I think this is an impressive dish if you've never made it before. Literally, as I'm using um, staple ingredients I generally always have. Most people are meat and three veg type of people. This is, if you're a person who's always wanted a Thermomix and you haven't been able to get your partner on board, I swear to you, this will be the dish that will get them over the line. <laughs> so, yeah. So just waiting for three minutes. So um, I was just trying to think of other combinations. Matt, can you yes. come over here? You can maybe give people some tips yeah. on what other flavor, uh, like combinations you would do. I was saying if we did, can you come over? Oh, um, the, we would do an olive tapenade or we'd do the sun-dried in the, in the meat. Um, yeah, or I, I'm thinking because it's porterhouse, you could even get away with like some sort of in, in Asian-infused oh, yeah. um, kind of a, a, a mixture. Um, so I'm thinking, because we often use, when we make the fur, we sometimes use for, um, porterhouse. In the first, All right, so, so making like some a, Thai green or like uh, a or lemongrass, yeah, and then make or almost like a like a broth to kind of drizzle over oh, the yeah, top, yeah, yeah. And then and you can use your Chinese, Asian greens, greens. Yep. yeah, um, as the basis. And if, if you like rice, you could have a little bit of steamed rice on the side. Yes, great idea, Matt, because I was never have thought of that combination. Yeah, um, you yeah, can, you could even do if you are um, if you like to heat. You could even do some sort of uh, like a like a chili kind of infused um, stuffing or pesto, like a hot sauce, hot sauce, like a hot sauce or a, or a barbecue sauce. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Um, there's a weird recipe I once saw about using like um, sticky sticky ribs using coke, like um, like cola. Um, I'm not sure if I'd use it. Uh, we don't use that. I know, I know. I, I, I realise that. I'm just, I'm just throwing out <laughs> ideas. Like if you want sort of flavours to go with it, I'm not sure if I go down that path. I wasn't recommending that. No. Um, yeah, but maybe even like a almost like a ragu kind of thing, like a tomato or um, a bit of wine, something there. Yeah. Sounds. Sounds amazing. Uh, let's jump over quickly. If you've got yeah. another couple of minutes, we'll jump yeah. over to see Beck's um, uh, cupcakes and then Heidi's things, um, and we'll and then we'll come back. Heidi's cheesecake. I mean. <laughs> okay, so our cupcakes finished a little while ago, and I've cheated and skipped ahead just a little bit, and I've had a bunch of family members come in and steal them. So. They're kid approved already. Um, basically, once they're finished, when you open up the aroma, um, they do seem a little bit wet, 
like compared to what you'd get out of the oven. But after a few minutes, they start to kind of absorb the moisture a little bit and look more like a oven baked cheesecake. Uh, cheesecake. I've got cheesecake on the brain now. Cupcake. Um, what I love about cooking them by steam rather than putting them in the oven is they don't tend to stick to the, the lining. They come straight out. They're so much easier to get out of the cake liners. Um, so basically all you need to do with this one is the rest of the recipes, you toss out the water, the cooking water, and you pop the rest of the ingredients in the bowl. So you pop in some sugar, a little bit of water and some lemon juice. And then you cook for three minutes and you basically get your syrup which I have here. So pretty much all you do to serve these ones is they can be eaten just like this. You could even ice them if you want to, like a cupcake. Um, but for this one, I'll just pop it down a little bit. Um, all you do is pop your lemon syrup over the top. Um, it is quite tart, so it depends what people like. You could sprinkle it with a little bit of icing sugar if you wanted to. Um, but you can also put some desiccated coconut over the top. We love being able to buy our own flakes, toast them, and then um, kind of blitz them up like this um, so you get more flavour and they're a lot better for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. So they're beautiful and, and moist in the middle. As you can see, they kind of just smush apart, but they're beautiful and cakey and, you know, like you don't get it dry. If Thank you. Can see that. you. <laughs> Thank you, Beck. And we went for a journey down memory lane because we used to do that at our Varoma cooking experiences, didn't we? Years it was ago. the best part of the cooking class. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'd love to add um, for 10 seconds, um, we used to put some of the, the red um, fruity dream, like a berry fruity dream. We used to put a, a, a tiny bit of it on top of those puddings um, and it looked absolutely amazing. Yeah, somebody said dollop cream on top with the raspberry, yeah, for the different, a bit of colour. Yeah, thank so I'm you. I'm also later because my kids, I'm so mean to my kids, I'm going to make some <laughs> lemon custard with the leftover because um, I needed two lemon, two lemons. Yes. I um, got the rind off both of them, so I'm going to use one to make lemon custard later to go with it. Oh, Excellent. beautiful. So lemony, so healthy. Thank you. Beautiful. What a lovely smile you have. And also, um, we are just going to see Heidi's cheesecake. Now oh, those cupcakes look amazing. I'm going to have to try those in the next soon. So this is what <laughs> I made yesterday. Obviously not as high as on the picture when you look at it. So it's not quite as high, but it's risen beautifully. It's a little bit tricky to get out of the spring form. I actually put a plate on, well, once you release the outside, I put a plate on top, stick it upside down so I can take the base layer off easily. I think the last time I managed to sort of accident is to separate the biscuits from the, the, um, um, the cream cheese. I, I was able to put it back together again. It was absolutely fine. This one, however, has come down, come apart beautifully, as in, come out beautifully sorry my dogs have just walked in and distracted me so beautiful and risen and firm and then you can serve that with there's a coolie they, they recommended a strawberry coolie which are pre-cooked also yeah nice and chilled and you can serve that with a dollop on top or you could use any fruit it's in season really use plums or mango anything but yes i'm sure this cheese pack won't last long Looks absolutely delicious. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you can have a cheesecake party. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you've inspired oh. people to try their own cheesecakes in their mm. Thermomix Varoma. Oh. Thank oh. you. Oh. And so back amazing. to you, Deb. So mm. I've actually put my gravy sauce on. In fact, I'm going to just um, do some peas and corn, which I think I should have done at the same time while I was steaming, but never mind. But I think we're all ready to eat dinner nice yeah. and time. Me too. I'm ready for my dinner. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Deb, for showing us a fancy, um, the fancy dish beef rotolo and luckily we have got the recipe um i will be emailing everybody all of these recipes um and i will show you what mine looks like plated up as well um so there's this the um the mash i've got the chicken that was steamed 
Uh, I've got my carrots, broccoli and zucchini that was all steamed all at once. Afterwards, I literally just put in some uh, into the cooking water. I put cashews, some stock, um, I think some paprika and garlic powder and um, whisked it up for a minute and you got a creamy sauce. So I'm going to pour that on and I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat that now. That jug, that jug. I want that jug. Yeah, isn't it cool? It's a thermo jug and um, it's, I think, about 250 mils it holds. There's a bigger one. There's a bigger one as well. There's a bigger one. Is it 750, the bigger one? Uh, 500. Have you got the 500. bigger one? I use 500 one. Perfect. I've got the big 500. Awesome. It's perfect for the Thermomix gravy. So, yeah, you, you know, you can make a sauce or a gravy from your cooking water. Um, the all-in-one chicken dinner has a beautiful gravy in it too. So I might pop some links of some similar recipes of what we did today um, uh, so that you've got some alternatives to, to do. Um, thank you. Did you find your jug, Heidi? You're eating a cheesecake? <laughs> Wow, so there's the bigger jug. Yeah. Yeah, and bigger? it's bigger. I, I make my herbal teas in here. I use it for everything. Oh. There's always yeah. something going in here and it stays warm for absolutely ages. Really surprising oh. how long it stays warm for. A mini so, yeah. thermo server. I'm, I'm glad I got the <laughs> big one. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi. And do you have any updates for us? <laughs> Hold on just one sec. <laughs> Sorry, I was just pre-cleaning the other Thermomix. So I did work out it was easier to use the baking paper to fold the pastry over. So I ah, <laughs> just wanted to show you that these ones look a little bit nicer. I've just brushed them with milk as well. So I'll post these on our um, group uh, Facebook page. After. Yeah, it Cool. Excellent. And if anyone, I'll pop the link to our Facebook page um, uh, as well for our team, the Flying Flamingos, and um, we'll pop some photos into there. But thank you, everybody, for coming along. I might just replace Spotlight. Um, thank you to all of our wonderful consultants for joining, and I hope you guys got some tips and feel more confident with your Varoma. Um, you will get a recording so you can watch this back, listen, listen to all the tips and the safety information that we did share um, because, um, yeah, then you can make sure you have – create beautiful food um, easily and quickly in your thermomix thanks for joining next month we're likely to do a, a session on waste free um, food because we believe there could be a new cookbook coming out next month so we'll wait and see um, and that uh, we'll, we look forward to doing another class with you guys then um, any other questions good I'm going to press stop on the recording. Um, of course, if anybody would like to um, join our team or join a, a team in general, please talk to your consultant um, because it's lots of fun. We love putting on these classes, don't we, ladies? Mm. <laughs> And um, you can, we learn lots as well, as well as making yeah, yummy food. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I think, Jess, the hot thing to highlight is the flexibility, especially um, I'm a virtual consultant. So mm. um, I don't have to go here or there. I work around my family. My family get to eat and it's a tax deduction too. So yeah. if you've got a passion for cooking and using your Thermomix, honestly, um, it would be uh, good to have you. Exactly. And that's one of the most, uh, biggest benefits we love is having this beautiful food to eat after our after we've um, been working. We get to eat the food. <laughs> How much fun is that? Thanks, guys. We love working with you and we hope we've inspired you. Um, Beck, have you got something you wanted to show us? No. Okay. She's got a whole heap of leftover cupcakes. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Lots of cupcakes. You might be able to freeze some. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, enjoy all your food, ladies, your cheesecake and your chicken gullet. I'm going to eat my food now because I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> it's dropping um, in and out, Jess. I think I'm I might some cheese. Well, I'm signing off, Jess. I've been on yep. my feet a little bit.
Okay, see you everyone. Okay. Remember to contact your yeah. consultant to organise host rewards or to talk further about the black thermomix um, or to talk about joining the teams. Have a great day. Thanks, ladies. Awesome job. <laughs> yum, yum. Oops, it's still recording.